Let's get into this thing. Let's talk about some inverted doubles. All right. So this, so we are still. This is only our second, second week through. There goes another plane. There we go. Welcome back to Fairfield, New Jersey. Whoever you are. So uh, in the August issue, uh, my good buddy Nick Costa, he wrote a piece on the inverted double stroke, uh, and I think if you haven't looked at the article yet. This is another one of those where you look at it and you think, okay, that's that's pretty simple. What's going on here? He's taking a double stroke roll and just, you know, displacing it forward by an eighth note or, or a sixteenth note. But what he's doing is he's maintaining the idea of accenting the first note of a double stroke roll. But then you displace right. it. So the first note of the double actually comes on, on the E and then the uh and the E and the uh and the E and yeah. the uh. So if you were taking what, – what I think a lot of us are familiar with is – I'll give you two sound sources, my lap and, my, and then my desk. If we were playing right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, a lot of us are probably pretty familiar with accenting that first right and that first left. Right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. And then what most of us do is we permutate or shift the accent without shifting the pattern. I'm mm. good with that. I can go right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, yep. right, right, left, left. I can do all that. This threw me for a loop. So now we're taking right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, but accenting it as if they were standard doubles. Yeah. Which, like you said, puts it on the E and the uh. I couldn't believe how quickly that threw me off. Yeah. And I think that is something that is grossly absent from most of our development is taking the double stroke roll and not because the way even you sang it, you're still accenting the first dun 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 where it's always on this like downbeat heavy 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 downbeat downbeat. But if you just accent all the E's and the uhs, it's a whole new world opens up. Can you sing a whole new world? Uh no. Well, you're in the Disney production world now. I thought you'd, I'd know, I thought you'd know that. You'll never hear um, me sing anything ever for the rest of my life. That's guaranteed. <laughs> so, yeah. So playing right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left is one thing. Yeah. Playing right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right. Oh, my God. I don't even know if I can do it. Right, left, left, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then putting a pulse in there. Of course. Yeah. So that is one thing that I think helps. And maybe... You can speak to this too, but in the beginning, when I was working on all of my independence, uh, and I'm going to say in my intermediate world, so I'm 15 to 20 years old, I'm starting to learn about this stuff. It seemed like bringing in the left foot was a torture device created by good drummers. And it was like, why? I can do this. Why are you making me keep time? Now, the left foot is actually what makes everything easier because I have a reference of pulse. Now that my independence is at the place to play that, are you the same or? Yeah, is it, I would agree. I would agree. It's easier for it's me. It's harder for me to take out. the left foot out. Yeah, it, yeah. I can I can figure it out when I have a pulse to reference into. Like just playing a displaced double short roll and accent the e's and the uhs. I think most of our ears would flip it and it would just flip it back to the downbeat again. Yep. So it kind of forces you to hear it the right way. But yeah, I think. <clears throat> excuse me, frog in my throat. Even just that first example. Going from number one to number two, there's a lot to be studied there. And again, you look at it on the page, you're like, okay, it's a it's a inverted double stroke roll with the accents on the e's and the uhs, no big deal. Okay, but can you really sit on those e's and uhs and not feel that anxiety of I got to get back to the downbeat? I got to get back. Yeah, to do the you downbeat. do you need the one of the next bar to come around really quick so you can hit the crash and then <laughs> right. breathe again? How long can you hold your breath? I think the other thing that you're going to get out of this, it's it's a mindset that you have to have, first of all, which is don't be in a rush to practice Nick's article and immediately try to figure out how cool can that be. These types of exercises don't really work like that. What happens is this breaks down these coordinational and barriers that are in your mind. It breaks them down. It opens things up. And you don't know when this is going to show up. This might not show up in the way you intended it, but it's making drumming so much easier for you. Yeah, for me, that those first three are entryways into a flow state where you can, exactly. get, you can get out of trouble because you know you've, you've worked yep. through these difficult combinations and stuff. Whereas if you go to Getting this, out of, yeah, go ahead. The, second, the second page of it where it's, he's applying it to, to like linear grooves, I'm almost like I don't, I don't want to do that because that's given me patterns to learn. 
Right. Like that's there yeah. for, for if you're more interested in how to apply this stuff to a groove, it's there. But for me, just sitting I, on those first three examples and just changing the tempo, changing the source, get into that flow state where I'm not like I don't have to think about it anymore. That's the goal. For I call me. I call the first three examples get out of jail free cards because we get stuck sometimes and we've all been in that situation where we were improvising somehow we added an extra kick or something and now we're left hand lead yep, and yep. we're in trouble <laughs> yeah. and we're like well i guess we're here now and i don't know how to and it's like the an inverted double will get you out of that just just hit one more note you know yeah. and and so these get out of jail free cards they show up in in the times when you need them the most but it's rare that i take something like this somebody just asked me online on uh we're doing a mike's lessons live stream and they said can you show me something cool to do with the book report? And I didn't even think. I just said no. Because I'm not, I don't, I don't think like that. Like, I don't learn a hybrid rudiment and run to the kit and go, how cool can this be? It's like, I don't know. A rudiment uh, that's called book report is inherently uncool. It's exactly. a book report. I'm not, uh, I don't even, what is it? Diddle, left, flam, diddle, right? At no point on a pad was I going You know what that's gonna sound good over the bio. Like I just I'm just working it out so my hands have dexterity. Same with this. Uh I like you said, it is cool that Nick shows you some great orchestrations for this, but that first section of it is what you need. I think that that's a bigger thing for most people is getting into what you called the flow state, being able to Improvise on the drum set without being too present mentally. Yeah, and not having to like think about how you're gonna get out of your phrase. I mean, you just let it go. And yeah. and and I think the added benefit is normalizing those e's and us. Then everything doesn't have to resolve like a heavy downbeat all the time. I think that's that's mm-hmm. when you get to that next level phrasing where everything doesn't have to resolve on one. You can right. you can go for e's and us and still feel grounded because you've you've internalized these things. Yeah, the one is still there, even if you don't smack a 20-inch crash right. when it happens. It yeah. still happened. Uh, and so I think that that's a beautiful thing when people have that flow. All right, well, you can check out that full article by Nick Costa. It's called Inverted Double Strokes, and it is in the Strictly Technique section. It is time to talk about our featured artist.